Welcome. Good morning. It's Andy Lee Graham, and I'm in Colombia. Colombia. And anybody who ever wants to know exactly where I at, they need to become a patriot. And I am going to say, after I have a certain percentage of patriot, I think once I get up to one thousand three hundred dollars. I won't need any more money per month, so I will cut off my Patreon. So I'm halfway there. Uh, but okay, I'm going to talk about uh, freedom, freedom versus forced. Okay, freedom for forced freedom. The opposite of freedom is when you're forced to do something, and it's kind of the, the word freedom is really ambiguous. Okay, and um, I I think we need to always slice and dice, dice it because people often think they're not free, but they don't even have a clue what they're free from, okay? But they're just angry, okay? My opinion is 90% are angry at their mothers and their fathers or their teachers or anybody in their boss, okay? These resolutions, okay, of course, the ex-wife and the ex-husband. But um, I, I remember I was... I'm going to talk about force. I was in Lake Athlon in this uh, coffee shop, and this guy starts talking really loud. Okay, and I he start he, he's prone to ranting. Okay, and I I usually there's two about three ways to have my friendship end with you. Okay, one is to start screaming. Okay, ranting, screaming, whatever you want to call it. I don't deal well. I don't deal with this, okay? Uh, the other way is to not be conscientious on returning calls, emails, whatever. And I'll think of the other one. But this man started started uh, ranting, and I said, hey, uh, I shouldn't say his name. He's not, he's got some social problems, right? But um, it's not that simple. Everything, there's many reasons why people do stuff. But he started going into this tirade, and he, he the crescendo was building. And I said, please. You have to slow down, stop, take it easy. And I said, if you don't, I'm going to stand up and walk away. <laughs> okay. Well, he, he took that as being a command or whatever. And it was uh, kind of an ultimatum. Okay. An ultimatum means that you either do it or I, I leave. Right. And he got different types of consequences for behavior. Well, he, he, proceeded to scream again and I I stood up and said well have a nice night and I walked away then he he writes me a text message on whatsapp he said normally in my world I would beat the hell out of you <laughs> okay and I was like going well what world are you living in that when somebody walks away from you screaming you beat them to death well it's about re they, they want respect without deserving respect and see this is the problem he was forcing me, trying to force me to stay by intimidation. It's not, that's not freedom, right? Okay. Um, people force me to put up with so many things that I'm sometimes going, why am I supposed to pick up, put up with your two dogs getting in a dog fight in the middle of the restaurant? <laughs> okay. I'm always laughing at the dog owners because they are some of the weak brain people on the planet. You think about it. They talk to dogs. Oh, yeah. They talk to dogs. I should do a stand-up comedian thing, right? Okay, but for, for some of you, I've been working on these three levels of these thinking, and I realize that 5% of the people that are listening to me are, are thinking and are making a decision. Does this apply to me or doesn't apply to me? The other ones are sort of 5% are processing, and the other, one, other ones are just being entertained. And uh, it's real easy to go into the f phase of everything. I, I have realized that if a person is not writing it down and filing it away in a, actually writing it down, okay, or putting it into their computer or processing it, they're not learning it, okay? And they, they think they learn everything like God. And I, I can hear supercalifragilisticexpialidocious and repeat it after hearing it one time. And this, they do the same thing for Spanish. They think they can hear a word one time and remember it. It's tough, okay? There's a whole process, but there are people that naturally learn languages. Like I naturally learn uh, computers and mathematics stuff and construction and things like that. I don't really have to work at it. It just goes into my brain as a visual thing. It's real easy. So don't compete on me with math. But if you want to go into the top 10% of humans, just take notes and file them away and learn how to file them away. Okay, but this man threatened me. So that was force. What is freedom? 
Freedom costs nothing, okay? It's absolutely the easiest thing on the planet is freedom because all you got to do is walk away from people. And that's the reason why a lot of people walk away from people and their hermits and they stay in their house all day is because they're afraid of an unfree world. I think somebody made a video about that. I, I really don't like that term. You should, if you're really free, you can walk anywhere on the planet and you're the... You're the master of the universe, okay? If you're master of nothing, you stay only in your house and talk to yourself. And the, you know, the best, your best thinking got you there. Okay. Uh, in a way, for me, by granting forgiveness to the world, I am able to accept and tolerate humanity. So as I'm walking around with all these people trying to force me to do stuff, I, I forgive them, okay, and then I don't say anything back because I like my freedom, and if I say something back, I, I'm empowering them to believe that they're making progress, okay? So when somebody tells me something real controlling or something I must learn or something you ought to do, don't get me wrong, there's, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, you really ought to learn this. And that's just a, you know, it's an idiomatic sentence. It's not saying you have to learn it, okay? That's not a force. When somebody gives you that evil look when you don't listen or you don't smile or you don't nod your head, that's a control thing, okay? Body language is very controlling. So always watch their body language. Uh, she hurt me. To be happiest, do what hurts you the most. Only true love can make a person vow to never do it again. True love will make you not vow to never do it again. But see, people think this is a type of force. My wife or my husband forced me to do this. And yes, there, the minute that you raise your voice, you give that contemptuous look, you move towards them, these are intimidation things, okay? So when you're flirting with the girl, be walking away. Don't be walking at them, okay? Uh, I'm always saying hello after they walk by. But... Uh, Everybody wants to act like everybody's controlling. And yes, that's 100% true, okay? They're every Absolutely everybody is controlling in some way, okay? Whether they're, I, I have a problem that I can get so many, uh, so many opinions that I can surround the, 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 it's like the Indians surrounding the stagecoach. You know how they go in a circle, then you got these Indians going around? Well, I'll make so many comments around that the person can't make anything without uh, contradicting my comments, okay? And that, that's really, I've learned to stop doing that because I have so many opinions. But consequences. I was, uh, I will say I've been in, uh, uh, Mark in uh, Mexico, Mark in Mexico recommended I pay attention to Eric Holfer, which is kind of a fat guy that smokes cigars, and I really don't want to be like him. <laughs> he said, oh, he's much better than Henry David Thoreau, and I thought... He's kind of a fat guy that smokes cigars. Okay, he is very smart, okay? But he, uh, he, they start out every video that this guy goes walking in the park, and they have some, some churned journalism. Journalism is when somebody copies the same thing over and churns it all over and try to make money. Uh, journalism, okay? But uh, they show him stop walking in the park, sitting down and taking notes. Well, Friedrich Nietzsche recommends doing this. Henry David Thoreau recommends this. And I realized why, because there is nothing forceful about nature, except, uh, I mean, lightning and a storm and a, a big dog and a bear and a lion and an elephant. Oh, there's a lot of things, right? <laughs> but it's pretty easy to walk in nature and be free of fear, okay? And once you're in a, a stage where you're just open, you can think. I uh, I can think in the middle of absolute chaos. I can think in the middle. Most, lot, some of my best thoughts have came on the uh, Stairmaster or the treadmill. I'm not going to do the Stairmaster anymore because I realize my high jumping legs, my knees, I have probably destroyed my knees because I've exercised them too much. There's only a limit to how much exercise you can. So you guys doing those deep knee bends, you might want to stop. I, I could high jump my height and shouldn't have done so many deep knee bends. But uh, when somebody says, don't judge me, um, I'm sitting there going, wait a minute, everybody judges me. You're, you're asking me not to think about you. 
okay, I'll, I'll walk away and I won't think about it. Judging you is not controlling you. A judge, uh, giving an opinion is not judging you. It's when they give you that dirty look and they, they scream at you. But when, when somebody gets angry at me and says, don't judge me, she's trying to corrupt, he or she is trying to control me, okay? And I, whenever anybody ever tells me I'm controlling, what they're really saying to me is, Andy, you are not controllable, so therefore you got to back off on your force and your domination and your ability to think and be charismatic and have personality and allow me to take over. The House, House of Bath in uh, Canterbury tells, the woman says, all women really want is solventry over man, which solventry over man is like magnitude, control, basic dominance over men. And that is what men want on women and women want on men. The girl, the last girl, well, this, two girls had passed. This, this Yvonne girl asked, the last thing she ever told me is, I can't marry you because, Andy, I can't control you. <laughs> and I go, oh, that's what this is about. Well, I knew that all along. Okay. There's, there's different types of consequences, okay? So kind of call force consequences, right? Consequences, you have, um, you know, you have ultimatums, okay? Ultimatums is, if you do this, I leave. And a lot of times, I think, especially when you're ready to leave somebody, you should write it down in paper and maybe post it on the wall. If you do this, I leave you, okay? Because um, everybody has an ultimatum. Dr. Roth in my uh, insane asylum when, uh, 30, say, 37 years ago told me, Andy, oh, what did he tell me? <laughs> he, okay, I'll think about it. I sometimes pause like that for effect and I forget what I'm talking about. That's because I'm not a genius. I'm a near genius. Okay, okay, but I'm not laughing. Dr. Ruff was really smart, and he he taught me a lot, but he talked about, um, he said, if you give an ultimatum to a wife or a husband, a husband gives a wife or a wife gives an ultimatum, and they just refuse to do it, run, <laughs> okay? Why should you do this? this? This means that they haven't grown up and become an adult and realize there's ultimatums in life, like you got to show up for work and you got to do it but there's people that say i will never forgive anybody i will never ask for forgiveness uh this girl last year told me i don't ever say i'm sorry because it's a sign of weakness and i said it's a sign of idiocy that's what it is because if you don't repent and say you're sorry right now i'm leaving <laughs> okay she didn't get it okay um uh, it it there is ultimatums in a relationship and an adult can deal with ultimatums. A, a child can. A child goes and pouts and screams and pouts and blah, 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 blah. But an adult goes, okay, yeah, that's fair. But you got to think about legitimacy. So there's also legitimate and illegitimate things. Most people will obey the law because they see a legitimate reason to do it. Okay, so the speed limit has a legitimacy um, like if their children is walking in the street, they think everybody should obey the law, okay? Then the children go away and they think that they can drive their motorcycle at 100 miles an hour. This is a problem here. This is a lack of growing up. But uh, there's consequences or force we accept. There's uh, consequences we agree to, okay? Uh, there's, there's consequences we refuse to... Uh, we refuse to refuse to obey, like the law. People say I the law law means nothing to them. And I sit there and I go, Why would you want to get rid of the law? That makes it so we can walk down the street without people driving on the sidewalk. I uh, I mix it so that if a, a person hits me with a hammer, he gets arrested and goes to jail and we take him off the street. But see, they, they pick and choose on these things, and they don't really understand that it's kind of a blanket thing of society that you get to put up with the laws. Now, there are times when the laws are wrong in civil disobedience, but this idea of defund the police, I can tell you, if somebody says the words defund the police, run, okay? Because that term is so stupid, you, you have to run, because the only way to deal with that person is to stay away from them, okay? Anybody that thinks defund the police or that one race white black pink orange is better than another anybody that says like i want to have white pride day 
Why not? There's Black Pride Day. There's German Pride Day. We should have white Caucasian Pride Day. It's just not legitimate and fair if I can't celebrate my race. Okay, but you can see when somebody acts like uh, they're having problems in, uh, in the uh, black world where they're coming up with this idea that white supremacy needs to uh, give power to the blacks. That's just idiot. That's an idiot thing to do. Okay, but it's a t control thing because what they're trying to make us feel guilty for is somehow we, I'm guilty for something my uh, ancestors did 500 years ago. Just don't work that way. Okay, life, you don't get to be punished for your ancestors unless you are an idiot. But if somebody wants to punish me for what my ancestors did 500 years ago, run, okay, because they're trying to use force of guilt and stuff. But guilt is a form of force, right? And shame is a form of guilt. White middle class guilt, middle class guilt is a horrible thing, okay? But there's a lot of people that are entitled that uh, don't realize that they're pretty obnoxious, right? I see it all the time when the uh, Americans go traveling or the Germans or whatever. They hand out money to people as if, oh, poor are you. <laughs> that is such an insult. Okay, but we have legitimate and illegitimate. Malcolm Gladwell goes into great detail on this in some of his videos about people will, will tolerate a law if they consider it legitimate. I consider it very legitimate that they took away my driver's license for 10 years and put me on house arrest for a year. It was absolutely deserved, and I obeyed it. And uh, obviously, the people coming across the border and breaking the law believe it's legitimate that they should enter a country illegally. But if I entered Mexico, Guatemala, Ecuador, Venezuela illegally, they would put me in a jail, call up my parents and try my family and try to extract $10,000, dollars 30000 from them. They would love this because that's how corruption works. But corrupt minds are think corrupt. Okay, nobody that wants to break the law to do something. But there are laws that are just not legitimate. There are things called blue laws. There's laws they made in the city that they made like 500 years ago that don't make any sense and nobody enforces them. And they, they really, it's kind of the secularization of the legal system, right? But we used to have common law in England, and then it kind of became written into a constitution. See, England and a lot of these countries don't have a constitution where they have your rights defined, okay? And then they try to define them by common law. Really tough thing to do. But I, I, there are things I refuse to obey the law, like a non-work ticket. I think this is just a money-making thing for the... Uh, for the, not for the country, but for the airlines. They want to enforce your uh, onward ticket because it's, it's a needed thing when an India person coming to the United States, he, he or she needs an onward ticket and proof that they have like three relatives in their country that they might go back and see. When anybody from any of the 200 really, I don't know, the 200 countries dreaming of going to the USA, coming to the United States, they need to have a house and two kids back home. Maybe something they'll give up. But that really will not stop a person from giving up. I asked, had a guy in Mexico like 20-some years ago. He said, Andy, help me to go to the United States. And I said, oh, yeah, no problem. I didn't think it was a big deal. And then I said, wait a minute, you have four children. I call it a Mexican divorce. <laughs> okay, Mexican divorces in a lot of countries, especially Catholic countries, they have trouble getting divorced, so what they do is they just desert the wife. That is not the way to do things, right? But we also have, so we have different kinds of consequences. The consequences we accept, and consequences only work if there's force behind it, okay? Some sort of force. I agree with the consequences. I accept the consequences. Different, accept is agreement, right? But agreement and acceptance, they kind of miss it. I refuse to accept the consequences. I will live, with, I will drive, a, I ride bicycles. If they told me to put a helmet on and ride my bicycle, I wouldn't do it, okay? I don't like to ride bike, uh, motorcycles with helmets. I will do it if I'm driving, I don't know, like 50 miles or something. But around cities, I don't really like to do this. But it's my choice to risk my life, right? I have a right to do it, but there's legitimate things where you really don't agree, but you sort of agree because you think, well, without it, the world would sort of fall apart. Legitimate and illegitimate consequences. But you have to make a decision when, some, when you see a law, is this a legitimate law, okay? And then you have habit consequences, routine consequences. People 
will agree to walk. I mean, in, in most countries, what's interesting is they walk just like they drive a car. The, the people walk on the right side and the other people walk on the left side. So they're coming at me from the left side and it's just like this. And I, I'm not sure, I really don't know about England. I would like to go to England and see if they walk on the, if they walk on the left side and think, are they walking just like they drive? <laughs> it's kind of fun, okay? But people uh, that are very smart, which is uh, the, the IQ test that I do is, at what point does a person in front of me decide to get on the left or right side of the, uh, of the sidewalk? If they don't do it until two feet away, I go, wow, that brain is not functioning. They are just being entertained by life and they're just putting in their time. But uh, there's many ways. I, I do this in Guatemala. There's cars parked in the road. The roads are very dangerous in Panama Shell, Guatemala. Very, very dangerous. And you watch the kids and they got a sidewalk over here with an edge that high and they can walk on the sidewalk. But they got to go up an edge this high and they got to break from being three abreast to one. Okay, and I watch her walk down the street and about nine out of 10 walk on the left side of the car into the traffic, three abreast. And I'm going, this is stupid. Then you get the one in 10 or something that walks on the right side and walks, makes it inconvenient, but knows he or she is walking safely. That is the smart person in the group. Okay, but, uh, this, is, but this is habit of not understanding the consequences. Okay, you should always look at consequences as a good thing. People that um, don't, have never had any consequences are not rational beings, okay? Um, a lot of people, uh, their mothers won't scream at them, they won't uh, spank them, they won't do it. They, they act like a two-year-old can actually understand language, right? You should say, don't do that, give them a little squat on the, uh, swat on the butt. You got to give them a little pain. Pain is what teaches you to be rational. Um, but jobs are an agreement to obey. Marriage is an agreement to obey ultimatums, okay? If you're not going to let your wife tell you how to live your wife, in the Bible it says, um, it, it, what they get all mixed up is, in the Bible they want the man to run the family, blah, blah, blah. But what it is is that uh, the, when, some, when the wife or husband gives an ultimatum to do something, and they're doing it in the best good of the family, um, you should obey, okay? Now, just to disobey is really uh, what a two-year-old does, okay? It's called the terrible twos. But you should look at it always as this a just and legitimate thing. Every request, I mean, you don't have any problem in management if you give them just and legitimate things, and the person is capable of understanding justice and legitimacy. If you got a worker that cannot, you give them something fair to do, just, and they just do it, just fire them, okay? They're not a good worker, okay? Uh, you, you know, they, they're going to wait, they'll obey all the rules for 90 days until they get it in union, and then they'll, they'll take, so unions cause a lot of dysfunctional people to have jobs. If Without unions, no, no people that cannot understand the, the goal of the boss is to get things done, and uh, obeying. So jobs are an agreement to obey. Uh, scream at a dog to obey. Okay, that's that's kind of a funny thing. Uh, do a, does a dog speak English? Anthropomorphism, that's the word. I like to say it when somebody's having a long conversation with their dog. I said, you really don't have any friends, do you? <laughs> I go, come on guys, really. I, I do know that it's like talking to yourself. Talking to yourself is a good idea. Talking to the dog is probably a good idea. I don't think it should interrupt to humans talking because the other person might think you really have no brain, okay? Because why are you talking to the dog when you have a human to talk to? Uh, right now, AI is becoming the best friend of a lot of people because some people have no friends, okay? If you don't leave your house ever, but why are they not leaving their house? They're told that there's pedophiles out there, there's criminals out there, and uh, what happens is the mother hands the uh, child a smartphone, probably an Apple one, because this type of person uses an Apple, okay? And you ha they hand them an Apple and they let them t the phone entertain them. So the, the whole person's, the little boy or child's life becomes enveloped in it. I think this is almost the end of intelligence, okay? Because you have to let people go out and learn by consequences. You want kids to play and want them to fall down. You want them to learn 
perception, how to use their bodies. You don't want them to get to 25 years old and whatever. I'm in a gym right now, and it's pretty humorous because the it's absolutely the funniest thing. In the country of Colombia, they must have watched these big, big, relatively fat, uh, I normally call them black girls because the black girls have bigger butts, much more beautiful butts on black girls until they get too big. But there must be a fashion to have exceptionally big butts. And I don't think this is a good idea as you get older. You're going to figure out that butt's just going to get bigger. And a lot of these girls in a gym have already way too big of butts, but they, they don't see contrast. And I go, being, having your butt big and then your thighs big and then your waist big just means you're fat, okay? It doesn't mean you have a great butt. It just means you're fat. You want to have a really small waist, really kind of smaller things, and a bubble butt. But... There's fashions in gyms. But the great part here is a lot of women are going to the gym here because of that fashion. So I'm sort of in favor of it because anything to get them to the gym, even the wrong reason, right? But the, uh, nobody's going on the, on the, almost nobody's using the pedal bicycles, the exercise bicycles. Very rare to see anybody doing any aerobic exercise. But they don't have much equipment in this room. I suppose if they had a Stairmaster, people might do it because they could get a bigger butt. Uh, but there's things we're forced to do, forced to wake up. I haven't been forced to wake up. I haven't used an alarm clock. I don't think I used an alarm clock since I was about 25 years old. I have them, and I use them just to be safe when I'm supposed to get on a plane, but I hardly ever wake up to it. I, I try to turn it off before it rings. But forced to wait, that's the law of opposite of freedom. So if you are in a world where you're forced to wake up, that's the lack of freedom, right? Forced to stay awake. I mean, I could imagine. I mean, I was forced to stay awake and listen to these teachers in high school, right? And grade school and whatever. People so boring that all it was was punishment to listen to them. So the smart people can be very punished in class. And... Uh, but the, a lot of them want to obey their mothers and fathers, so they do very good grades so that they, they have their mother and father happy with them. I never really cared about my mother's and father's opinion on my brains. Actually, I don't care about anybody's opinion on my brains. I feel quite satisfied. Uh, but uh, one of the great things about my parents is uh, they force me to live on my allowance. So they give me like a dollar a week or something like that. I think they went up to $5 a week. Even when I was in university, they gave us like $10 a week. And they didn't fluctuate this. And I think the worst possible thing you can do to a child is give them money every time they ask. That, that teaches you money has no value, and it's the opposite of reasoning. A reasonable person has to stay within boundaries. And parents are, you know, but we have a generation of children of hippies, right? Turn in, turn out, drop out, right? I mean, this is the absolute problem on the planet that we have second or third generation hippie children. Okay, the greatest generation went into the military and they learned the consequences of not obeying the sergeant. They might get killed. Uh, but learning rational behavior is always a result of consequences. It's quite simple. Without consequences, you can't make decisions. You don't learn where the boundaries are. Uh, forced to be quiet or get a spanking. Not really sure that's a good thing for children. I'm always laughing when people are screaming at children for being children. I go, golly, you're angry at a child for running around and jumping. There will come a time when you wish your child would run around happy and jumping. Okay, Encourage it, but encourage them to do it in a place where they're not causing a bunch of things. So that's the reason why the parks are good. You take the children. But I think children should be free range. You should be able to go within like a, almost a two or three mile radius of their home safe. If, if they can't do that and you're screaming at them all the time, what they're learning is life is dangerous. These are consequences. These are forces. Freedom is the opposite of force. I take a nap every afternoon. I've done it for the last 45 years. People ask me how much I sleep. I sleep about six hours, but I also sleep another half hour every afternoon because I'm not, if I feel like falling asleep, I fall asleep, okay? I don't have anything, the consequences. 
Okay, so today I'm trying to go through what's forceful consequences and taking notes, okay? I really want the world to realize that if you're only listening all the time and you're not uh, somehow saving that information, if, if you hear something, uh, this one of the things I really respected about Eric Holfer, he said something like, he wrote a book and he said, I wrote like five noble thoughts, five profound thoughts. I wrote five uh, great explanations. And what more can you find in a book? It's really hard to say that in a certain books, like if you're reading a self health book and there's not like, you know, every chapter, like five poignant, almost noble things to remember that you ought to underline and try to remember. It's not a very good self-help book. It's probably just a set, sort of a mental masturbation book, okay? Making you feel good by saying, oh, this is describing you, and this is you, and you, and you. And there's, there's things that try to define you as a genius because eh, they're, they're, they're evil websites, okay? But consequences. People that learn write things down and try to recall them. They don't try to just recognize them. They actually even try to recall them. They try to internalize them and put them into their soul. Okay, I'm here and you're not. Why not? It's because I'm a uh, like Charlie Munger or Naval Ravikant. I'm a I'm a perpetual learner, and that's what a philosopher is. So I would say Charlie Munger and Naval Ravikant and some of these guys, Tom B Bilu or whatever, is definitely. I think a philosopher. I don't agree with his work ethic. I think he's uh, highly addicted to trying to control himself and he should just have more fun and less strict adherence to these self-imposed rules. What do you call it when you give yourself a rules? I, I do things by, I, I, I force myself to exercise by renting a room on the third floor of a hotel. I force myself to exercise. I have a uh, I'm, I'm going to show you something, might as well, to end this, but I forced myself to exercise by putting the coffee and, and heating the water on the floor. I have it on the floor, I bend over, and that gives me exercise. And it's by design there. I'm not putting it on the floor because I have to. I've got a table right here, and I can put it on there. But uh, I've learned that I want to, lest I forget exercises, there's no way to forget to exercise if I'm forced to do it, right? So I have all these things I do to make it. But my my biggest exercise is really, I don't know, walking up and down hills, sideways, walking up and down steps. I'm really sad in this gym that nobody's understood that aerobics is what's going to make you live longer, <laughs> okay? Uh, aerobics is the, probably getting your heart rate up, your blood pressure roaming. Guess what? When you exercise, you raise your blood pressure. Then they tell us not to raise our blood pressure. they got to make up their mind. Do I want to raise my blood pressure, my heart rate, or do I not want to raise my blood pressure, my heart rate? I really think anybody on blood pressure medicine should get a life and try to realize there's ways to control your blood pressure, like, like uh, turmeric, garlic, cinnamon, uh, peppers. There's a whole list of these foods that calm you. And what does that calming do? It lowers your blood pressure. If you want to raise your blood pressure right before you get in bed with your wife, take two full glasses of water. I'm always laughing when somebody's, calm, you know, it's like I had this guy, Chris, come down to Lake Eta, and after, you, you know, his wife almost killed him or something like that, and he's, he went in some Viagra, and I go, what does Viagra do? I didn't know anything about it at the time. And he goes, it raises your blood pressure and puts uh, pressure in your uh, penis, right? And I go, but you're on low blood pressure medicine or high blood pressure medicine. Why don't you just stop taking the high blood pressure medicine? Well, I need it. And I go, so you want to have a fight within the body. Okay, that makes sense. This, this, takes, this take Viagra to raise your blood pressure, but take uh, statins and whatever to lower your blood pressure. Let's get a life. Okay, I'm Andy Lee Graham. There's all these consequences, though. And if you uh, give a consequence to a person and they act like you're unfair, and you know, and you talk it over and you even agree that they're fair, and they still do the other thing. Run! People that um, really have not grown up cannot understand consequences. 
And guess what? That's 80% of the population. <laughs> okay. It's not like everybody grows up. It's just that they, they do finally learn to show up for work or not lose their job. And the best thing that can ever happen to a person is they can get a job, become a wage slave for 30 years, actually work 40 years, 50 years until they fall over dead. That's the best thing that can ever happen to a person. Because they really don't want to be free. Okay, I'm Andy Lee Graham.